Good afternoon. As you can see on this slide, my name is Ipe Portinga, and I'd like to share some of my memories of Jurgenland Senna, Prof Senna, as he is uh, commonly known, definitely in India, and I'd like to add a comment. The first time that Prof. Senna and I interacted rather extensively was before and during the 1976 IACCP conference held in Tilburg, my university. I have a vivid recollection of him walking into the main hall at the head of several Indian colleagues. Unfortunately, I do not have a picture to show but at the time, there was a bunch of youngsters with an idealistic view of IACCP conferences as a platform where lack of money should not be an impediment to participation. This implied a strong drive for travel subsidies, low cost meals, and a free conference for participants from low income countries. The conference in Tilburg was able to afford a substantial number of travel grants and Prof. Sinha worked hard to make sure that his young colleagues from India did get their fair share, and perhaps even a little more. I am grateful that the conference could hold several Indian colleagues. It was the start of some long personal relationships, especially in Alaba. Prof. Sinha had gained an international reputation and it was no surprise that he was elected to be president of IACCP. This was the period of 1990-1992. Here you see the title page of his presidential address, Cross-Cultural Psychology, A View from the Third World, uh, which was published in the Proceedings of the um, uh, conference, edited by Dering Gosti and others. During the Professor Prof. Senna's presidency, I was secretary general, and there were rather frequent interactions through blue airmail letters called aerograms. They can still be found in the IACCP archive. And please realize that this was well before the times of internet and email. President Sinha was a gentle taskmaster he reserved leadership activities to issues that mattered. And IACCP did well during his years at the helm of the association. The third time that Prof. Sinha and I corresponded extensively was when he wrote his chapter for the Handbook of Cross-Cultural Psychology, the second edition, under the general editorship of John Barry. I was the acting editor for the chapter, uh, pleasant task as it was a good review and well written. Here you see the, the, the cover page of the book and here you see the title page of Prof. Senna's chapter, Indigenizing Psychology. I'd like to conclude with a comment. Indigenization of psychology meant to Prof. To prof. Senna embedding psychology in a particular cultural context and establishing the universality of its empirical base and principles. There are two aspects to indigenous psychologies and indigenization. First, the worldviews found in particular parts of the world and how they influence psychology as a science and a profession, as fields of practice. The second aspect is making psychology irrelevant in a society. And this requires institutionalization, faculties in uh, universities, it requires education programs, and it requires institutionalization of research and application. An example of uh, a study in this, into this kind of institu institutionalization and this kind of Indian Indigenization you can find in Adair, Puhan, and Vara, published in 1995. Prof. Sinha 
refers in his chapter repeatedly to this. These two aspects which I mentioned are both emphasized in his handbook chapter. Today we talk often about the world as a global village. Durganand Singha to me is an early global villager, a child from India, a student in the UK, a renowned scholar at home and internationally. He did not believe in dichotomies and contrasts, but in integration. And perhaps we should keep this in mind in a world where peoples within and across nations increasingly seem to be torn apart. Thank you for inviting me to this meeting and thank you for your attention.